Amen. The Lord is good. All the time. All the time. The Lord is good. All the time. And all the time. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad for the opportunity to share God's word with you this evening. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, please stand quickly with me to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 9. And we will start reading from verse 19. Romans 9, 19. I will be reading from the New Living Translation. Well then, you might say, why does God blame people for not responding? Having they simply done what he asked them to do? No, don't say that. Who are you, a mere human being, to argue with God? Should the things that was created say to the one who created it, what have you made me like this? When a potter makes a jar of clay, doesn't he have a right to use the same lump of clay to make one jar for decoration and another to throw garbage into? In the same way, even though God has the right to show his anger and his power, he is very patient with those on whom his anger falls, who are destined for destruction. He does this to make the riches of his glory shine even brighter on those to whom he shows mercy who were prepared in advance for glory. <coughs> Verse 24. And we are among those whom he selected, both from the Jews and from the Gentiles. Concerning the Gentiles, God says in the prophecy of Hosea, those who were not my people, I will now call my people. And I will love those whom I did not love. And then, at the place where they were told, you are not my people, there they will be called children of the living God. And concerning Israel, Isaiah the prophet cried, though the people of Israel were as numerous as the sand of the seashore, only a remnant will be saved. For the law will cry out, will carry out rather his sentence upon the earth quickly and with finality. Verse 29. And Isaiah said the same thing in another place. If the Lord of heaven's army had not spared a few of our children, we would have been wiped out like Sodom and destroy like Gomorrah. Amen? Amen. 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 Before we enter the world, let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I bless you this day. I pray, O oh God, that you anoint your servant to preach your word as you intended, and that you anoint the hearts of your people to receive your word as you intend. We thank you and bless you. In your name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 It is natural for us to, to look at the relationship we have, the relationship of God and man through the natural eye. It's natural for us to see that. But sometimes our natural perspective doesn't paint the right picture. So at times it is necessary for us to try to see things through the, the lens of God or through the eyes of God. Amen? 
A quick example is uh, the, the story Jesus told with this man, this rich man that brought his, his gifts. Right? Through the natural eye, we say, oh, that guy is giving a lot to God. But he also said a woman came with a few pennies. And Jesus Christ said she gave more than he did. Because she gave out of her lack. And he gave out of his abundance. Mm. So you see, when we see things through the eyes of men, we can sometimes be seeing the wrong thing. So it is very, very necessary for us to see things through the eyes of God. And that is what Paul was trying to do here. All right? Paul was trying to make us to see our salvation through the eyes of God, from God's perspective. Amen? Amen. The title of this sermon this evening is Our Salvation is a Testament of God's Mercy. Our salvation is a testament of God's mercy. Our salvation, the big picture here, is our salvation is the work of God. Amen? Many times we can see it through our lens. And sometimes we point fingers. And sometimes we, 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 we conclude and judge. Right? Well, we got to know salvation. Our salvation is all the working of God. Amen? Amen? Amen. So how is our salvation the work of God? How is it the work of God? Well, there are two major points that I will be covering today. All right? To explain that fact. The first point is that God is sovereign in judgment. God is sovereign in judgment, meaning God has the right to do whatever he wants to do, whenever he wants to do it. Amen? He is sovereign in judgment. He is sovereign in judgment. The scripture we read, Paul anticipated a question based upon everything he has stated uh, uh, prior to the, the text that we read. All right, In verse 15, of that particular chapter, he's quoted God as saying, I will have mercy on whom I will have I'll choose to have mercy on. Alright? And then he starts, verse 19, he starts with a question. And this is a question that, that, that comes to mind that many people think about, but sometimes we don't have the, the fortitude to ask. Right? So he anticipated the question that, it, that his audience were going to ask. And the question was, but then why God found fault in man if he has the, the, the choice to choose you know, what he wants to do? Why he finds fault? So that particular question suggests then that man is not to be blamed. And that God is to be blamed. Amen? Amen. That's the reason why Paul, in no time, said, no, 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 don't even ask that question. Let's put things into perspective. Paul was saying, I do not want to address that question from men's perspective. I want to address that question from God's perspective. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 So, we cannot question God's choice. We just cannot question God's choice. We cannot. Amen. Amen. Why? Why can't we? Well, Paul said, the thing that is made doesn't have doesn't have the right to speak to the one making it to say, why are you making this way? Now, I want for us to, to get this. All right? Because this is one of the scriptures that many people take to justify their explanations are wrong. Amen? What Paul is saying here is that, look, God is sovereign in judgment. That doesn't excuse men from their actions. 
Let's get it. Because if that is why Paul was saying then you will be contradicting himself. Yeah. That if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. You see, Paul was talking about men's action. We need to have faith. Amen? So Paul was not neglecting the actions of man when he was talking about the sovereignty of God. Amen? 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 He wasn't. But he was addressing how God works in our salvation. And the first thing he said is that God is sovereign. God is sovereign. God does what he wants to do. Amen? Amen. And we cannot question him because we do not have the authority to do so. Amen? Amen? Now, he further went on to say, God chooses those who he wants to choose. All right? And to, to further explain his view, he talked about a part of making a jar of clay. One thing that really hit me was, he said, out of the same lump of clay. Yeah. Out of the same lump of clay. All right? He makes one a vessel of honor yeah. and another a vessel of dishonor. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. That tells me that the, the clay in itself has no different value yeah. Yeah. from the other. Yeah. It was the same lump of clay over the other. Amen? Amen? The honor comes with the working of God. Yeah. He makes one a vessel of honor yeah. and a vessel of dishonor. Amen? Amen? He. God. So God is at work in our salvation. We, we are a testament of God's, of God's uh, salvation, of God's mercy. Amen? Amen. 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 So we're making it clear, right? That he's not excusing men. Because there are so many scriptures that talk about us. Jesus Christ said, in fact, that uh, the law is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen? So God is not willing that any. However, Paul is looking at God's action. He's not excusing men's action. Because when we go further, in fact, you will see how God's action will lead to mercies for us. Amen? Amen. Am I preaching good so far? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Now, so God, uh, Paul here is telling the church in Rome about the sovereignty of God and uh, he lists all these things that we cannot question the God, that God, that we, that God chooses one over the other. Amen? Amen? Yeah. So God is not only sovereign, but God is merciful. Amen? Amen? Amen. God is not only sovereign, but God is merciful. So in the very first part of this dialogue, he was talking about the sovereignty of God. And the next point he went to is to talk about the mercies of God. Amen? Amen? And he said that even when God is uh, executing his wrath, he is patient. He endures. Amen? Amen? God endures. God takes. God carries. Even when he's executing his wrath. What a God we serve. The scripture is telling us that when God is even angry with you, he is still patient with you. Amen? Even when he's angry, he is still patient with you. Amen? Amen. 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 The scripture tells us that we shouldn't be, we shouldn't take lightly the patience of God, the kindness of God. Because he does so to give room for repentance. 
Amen? That is the reason why he endures patience even when he's executing right. Amen? Now, we're talking about a God that is merciful, right? We are the product of his mercy. Amen? Amen. 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 Now, let's go deeper into the word. Let's go deeper into the word. Let's go deeper into the word. The mercies of God extended to them. Amen? And then he started to quote Hosea. He quoted two, two uh, verses from Hosea. All right? One of them, I think it's worth, it's worth, it's worth reading. Let's go there. Let's go there. Are you there? The first one, he said, those who were not my people, I will call my people. And I will love those who I did not love people. Amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, this the prophet was speaking, Hosea was speaking at the time about the Jews. Because of their disobedience, God rejected them. And after their repentance, he was saying that those who were called not my people will be called my people. Amen? Now Paul is using this verse to support his view. He's talking to Gentiles. He's telling the Gentiles now that you that once upon a time were not called God's people, now will be called God's people. Why? Because of his grace. Amen? Amen. The scripture tells us that because he endures patience, he now extends his mercies to many. Amen? He's merciful. Amen? Then at the place where they were told, you are not my people, there they will be called the children of the living God. Now tell me. So many times when we read this, we try to question, oh, God is this, God is partial. But the scripture is telling us that God is merciful. God is merciful. Amen? He's merciful. The people that will not call my people will be called my people. To give such mercy. Just the mercy of God. Amen? It is just the mercy of God. We didn't do anything. Then God extends his mercy to, to, the, to, the, to the Jews. So he quoted these two verses from Hosea to support his view that the mercies of God were extended to the Gentiles. But well, he says it's also extended to the Jews. All right? When he quoted the, the third one, that Isaiah was saying, though the, the, the children of Israel were as numerous as the sand, only a remnant would be saved. Now let's get it. In previous verses, when Paul started to talk about this, he talked about how God chose Jacob, right, over Esau. And he said it was nothing wrong when God chose. So nobody came up, nobody was doing something wrong and something right. God chose. Amen? Now, the children of Israel were also chosen. But then Paul is saying, yes, yeah, only a remnant will be saved. Amen? They both came from the sea barren, but one was chosen and the other was. Amen? Amen? From the same lump of clay, one for honor and one for dishonor. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, some would ask, where is the mercy of God in this? Amen. Where is the mercy of God? So, let me reiterate. Let me see if you, 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 you're on track, right? Amen? Amen. We said that our salvation is a testament of God's mercy. God is sovereign in judgment. Right? He's sovereign. 
2. God is not only sovereign in judgment, but God is also merciful. Amen? God is merciful even when he is executing judgment. Amen? Amen. 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 Now, let's bring this thing home. Let's bring it home. Let's bring it home. Verse 29. Verse 29. The very last verse. Says here. If the law of heaven's host or heaven's army had not spared a few of our children, we would be like Sarah and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. This is the conclusion of the matter. Paul is saying here it's only because of the mercy of God that we are not like Sarah and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. It's only by the mercy of God. It's only by the mercy of God that we have descendants, that we have our children still living and not completely destroyed. It's by his mercy. Amen? Amen. Now, stating Sodom and Gomorrah here doesn't only really show the extent of God's, of God's judgment, but it also shows that we are just equally worthy of God's judgment. We are no better than the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. So when Paul said that the grace of God is spread and we are the proof of, of his grace, he's saying here that the grace of God is the product of, of our salvation. God did a God move. If it was not for God, we would never have anybody left. So Paul is, Paul is praising the mercies of God. He's praising the mercies of God. He's exalting the mercies of God. Amen? Amen. This is something that we, we need to get. As I said in opening, there are times where we get this, our earthly perception. But it's, it's, it's also important for us to get a heavenly perception. To know that, look, man, God is behind the scene working for our salvation. Amen? Amen. Once upon a time, I was on the wrong path. Seriously, I was running away from God. But God came searching for me. I didn't go to church. I wasn't going to church. I was running away from the church and going to encounter the gospel. So all those years of sin, as we just read, God endured with patience so that I will come. All the years of sin, God endured with patience. And then he sought me. I didn't seek him. So I can identify with Paul when Paul said, we are the product of this. Because we know Paul was running away from God. In fact, he was running to persecute God. Amen? That's the mercy of God. It is important for us to understand that we are saved by his grace. Saved by his grace. He worked up our salvation. Because at the time we don't knew him, we never even valued him. Amen? I want you to leave today knowing that we are the product of God's mercy and grace. And we should lay a life worthy of that mercy. Let, 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 let's put it into perspective. Because you see, the mercies that you have, other people wish. They have. Other people wish they had. So we should not only recognize that we are the product of God's mercy and grace, but then we should live the life worthy of that mercy. We should live the life worthy of that mercy. Amen? Amen. 
all salvation is by God's mercy. God is sovereign in judgment. God is merciful even when he's executing his wrath. God is merciful even when he's executing his wrath. It's like a father that loves his child and he knows his child went the wrong way. Even when he's punishing that his child, he's punishing that child with mercy. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's just say, you are a parent, right? And your child went behind you, went in your room and stole your $2, $3, right? Five years old. Wanted to, wanted to go buy a popsicle or something. Man? And you are a parent of justice. So you take that child, carry the child to the police station and say, you put a child in there because the child stole. And the law said, when you steal, you got to get it. You don't treat your child like that. Why? You discipline the child, but with mercy. Amen? Amen. Amen. God is a God of mercy. And we are the, the, the product of His mercy. Our God is sovereign. He has the right to do whatever He pleases. Whatever He pleases. And He chose you. He has the right to plead, to do whatever he pleases. And he chose you. Isn't that a privilege? Ooh. That your future remain. I chose you. And you will live worthy of my mercy. Our salvation is by God's mercy. God is sovereign in judgment. God is merciful when executing his wrath. Amen. Amen.